Hey, happy Friday. This week, Windows gets some exciting new updates, a completely new type of image sensor comes to smartphones, and AI gets radically smarter and cheaper. It's a week full of positive news for once, and yes, I forgot my camera, but anyway, welcome to the Friday checkout. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, this week's brief is jam-packed with interesting announcements from MWC and beyond, starting with Lenovo, who showed off both a laptop and a phone with a rollable screen, with the latter being called the Moto Riser. The unrolled version of the phone especially doesn't give you that much extra space, so I don't know if that's worth all the extra complexity, but I guess these are just tech demos, so whatever, they're still pretty cool. Anyway, on a slightly more practical note, the company also showed the ThinkBook Plus Gen 3, which features not only a second display that you can mirror your phone to, but also an ultra-wide main screen. Kind of weird, but intriguing. Then Oppo announced their new AirTags or Tile competitor prototype that doesn't need a battery, but apparently can just harvest ambient radio signals for power, and they say that in the future, this might even come in the form of stickers. That is either great, or it will make being a stalker even easier than AirTags already do. Next, Redby announced their 300 watt fast charging technology just four months after being the first brand to surpass the 200 watt threshold, which seems nuts and took a prototype battery to 100% in less than five minutes. Anyway, Redmi's parent company, Xiaomi, launched its Xiaomi 13 series in collaboration with Leica, with the 13 Pro essentially having the same impressive 1-inch Sony IMX989 sensor that was limited to the China-only 12S Ultra in the past, and Honor announced the Magic VS and the Magic 5 Pro, which are basically the answer to what a Huawei foldable and a regular flagship would look like in 2023 if they still had Google Apps and were actually available in some countries around the world. Next, Google added fall detection to Pixel watches four months after it launched. Not bad. Adobe was having a bad week as their acquisition of Figma reportedly was put on hold, with reports saying that the US, the EU, and the UK are all scrutinizing their deal. Qualcomm said that they assume Apple will stop using their modems starting in 2024, probably with the iPhone 16, when they will be switching to their own in-house solution. There was basically a clone of the Nothing phone at MWC, already, so that's weird. And Nothing also announced that their new phone will have an 8 series chip from Qualcomm by holding a t-shirt. Well done. And you know what that means? <laughs> that's right, it's that magical time of the year when Carl Pay starts to drip feed us phone specifications one by one so they can manage to hit every news cycle at least once in the next six months, while also still not quite telling us anything particularly interesting about their device. Can't wait. Also this week, Signal said that it might 1000% quit the UK over new proposed encryption laws, and we talk about that and all of our thoughts on the newly announced stuff coming out of MWC this week in my podcast, The Friday Chillout, which you can watch or listen to right now on Nebula or over the weekend if you're not a Nebula subscriber. Links to both are down in the description. Okay, so that's it for the brief, and for my first story of the week, we'll have to talk about a surprising number of exciting updates for Windows, and I say this unironically. That's right, this week we got leaks about Windows 12 from none other than Intel's internal documentation describing processor support for future OS features, probably starting in 2024. The main thing we know so far is that the Intel chips will finally have dedicated AI coprocessors, as Windows 12 will have more and more AI features built in, and these dedicated coprocessors are already supported on many Snapdragon processors, as well as some AMD chips, where they can do things like fake your eyes looking into the camera and blurring your background more efficiently. I wonder if you'll actually need a new chip with an AI coprocessor to upgrade to Windows 12, just like you needed a TPM security chip to get Windows 11, but that's just a guess of mine for now. Instead, what we got was a fairly major upgrade to Windows 11, which I'm actually kind of looking forward to. My favorite update is that the already excellent snipping tool just got a built-in screen recording feature, including the ability to record a certain part of your screen or just a certain app. 
that's pretty cool. And it means that most people probably won't have to download a third party screen recorder ever again. Next, Phone Link just got kind of useful for iPhone users with the ability to actually view and send iMessage messages from Windows. This uses a kind of hack since Apple doesn't actually give real external access to iMessage. So Windows is using the same Bluetooth messaging access that cars, for example, can tap into. And therefore this solution won't support advanced features like group texts or sending images, but it should still be good enough for a quick reply. And meanwhile, us Samsung users got an upgrade too. We can now turn our mobile phone's data hotspot on through the phone link app on Windows, much like macOS users can turn their iPhone hotspots on remotely too. Phone link is genuinely awesome on my Samsung phone, so I'm super happy that they keep working on this. Beside that, there's also a few smaller upgrades like Notepad getting tabs, a new collapsed minimal taskbar, if you use a Windows device in tablet mode and more. But the next big thing to keep your eyes peeled for will be a rumored major rework of the file explorer as leaked by Windows Central. I've linked to their full article in the description with all the details, but apparently much of the app is going to be completely rewritten with new frameworks and a plan to update the UI with big file previews and activity feed, better integration with OneDrive and Office and more. Overall, I really like how Windows 11 has evolved on the user interface side of things for the most part, and I'd love to get something like Apple's M series chips for the platform so I can finally switch back to it fully and ditch my MacBook already. Okay, for my second story of the week, let's talk about a possible reinvention of camera sensors. And when's the last time you've heard something like that? So Qualcomm this week announced that it had partnered with the French camera chip startup called Prophecy, which will bring its event-based MetaVision technology to future smartphones. Now, if that sentence made you roll your eyes into your skull from boredom, don't worry, that's just corporate speech for something that's actually pretty exciting. So Prophecy actually designed a completely new type of image sensor. And while traditional sensors create a frame by reading out all of the pixels from the whole sensor at once, and then repeat that multiple times per second to create video, this new one is designed to only read pixel information that changes from the last frame to the next. This means that it has to process way less data per frame, which lets it shoot up to 10,000 frames per second. In industrial applications, this is useful, for example, for filming fast moving particles, or maybe for processing lots of data in a self driving car so it can track objects with super low latency. But Qualcomm says that it will bring this tech to phones soon too, and they will combine the new sensor with a traditional camera sensor to create images that are fused from between the two. So, for example, the tennis player in this image would have the fast moving racket captured without motion blur by the new fast sensor, while the rest would still be captured by a normal sensor with maximum detail. That's a pretty interesting concept, and I guess Qualcomm's idea is that the Snapdragon image signal processor will be able to handle this image capture and fusion technology by default, so it becomes something that phone makers can roll out in their devices with relative ease. Now, beside reducing motion blur, Prophecy also says that they should be able to get much better dynamic range and low light shots of moving subjects, especially due to all of the extra detail that this camera sensor can capture, which could be a game changer if true as well. The sensor itself is apparently manufactured by Sony. So with both Sony and Qualcomm on board, I guess it is also reasonable to expect this to be about as far from being vaporware as possible. Fingers crossed, this actually looks like it could turn out to be pretty cool. Cool. Okay, and my last story of the week will be our recurring segment AI News Weekly, because once again we have a ton to talk about. So perhaps the biggest AI news this week is that OpenAI made ChatGPT available via a standard API. This means that many apps can now just integrate it without having to ask nicely or having to build any sort of custom solution. And we hear that companies from Snapchat to Instacart are already doing just this. This is also using a version of ChatGPT that is apparently 10 times cheaper than the previous versions. And so the progress really is remarkable here. And the second OpenAI tool that was made available available via API as well is called Whisper, which is apparently a super accurate speech to text transcription tool. Then Mark Zuckerberg announced this week that they will have a whole dedicated new top level product group at Meta focused on generative AI entirely, while Microsoft also decided that it doesn't just want to be the sugar daddy of open AI, but instead released its own AI model called Cosmos One. 
This one is apparently self-developed, and the magic here is that it's a multimodal model. Multimodal model. Great tongue twister. Anyway, you can give it multiple inputs for a single task, like maybe an image as well as text instructions, for example, and then you can have an ongoing conversation with it using both. So for example, this image plus a question, quote, what's in this image with some back and forth on it after that, and also answers about images, like maybe a picture of a boy and the question of why did the little boy cry with the machine answering because his scooter broke. I mean, poor boy, sad example, but kind of impressive idea. The company apparently wants to include video and audio into this multimodal functionality in the future too, which would indeed be a pretty major upgrade. Now, whether it is AI or new types of image sensors, it's clear that more and more of the future will belong to the people who understand and wield science and technology best. And if you'd like to belong to that group, then look no further than Brilliant. Brilliant is the online platform for learning STEM skills from maths to physics, biology, computer science, and even just good old logical thinking. They have courses covering beginner to advanced levels in each topic, and whichever path you choose, you'll find extremely well-crafted lessons broken down into small chunks that each have an interactive quiz at the end to drill whatever you have just learned into you right away. This creates true understanding bit by bit, rather than just having to recite things for a test, and I think my viewers would be particularly interested to check out their computer science classes. From neural networks to quantum computing and more, you can get a real fundamental understanding of the topics that we talk about so casually in my videos, and doing so can help you improve your studies, find a new job, or just get smarter for the sake of getting smarter. You can try Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash DFC, and the first 200 people who sign up using that link will also get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you next week.